Welcome back. We have an unusual and amazing opportunity now to talk with Trina Limpert and Ron Gold together on the topic of DEI in an opportunity to really send home the message of how connection and relationship and inclusivity build an entirely new conversation and can potentially make the world better for us all. So welcome Trina, welcome back Ron. And I'm so grateful to have you both here with us again today. Glad to be here, thanks Lauren. Great, it is, We're great to be here. So tell me a little bit about what you're setting out to do together and how is this really going to uh, manifest as a, an even more powerful initiative uh, in the world of DEI? Well, I'll, I'll start and then Ron, I want you to add all your wonderful ideas to, to the conversation here. So the biggest thing I have is really creating awareness and broader thinking, because once we're aware, we can become more intentional in creating change. And so the more that we can get out and talk about our own experiences and share those with others, it creates more awareness and, and looking around and saying, oh, there's something else I can do as well, or aware of somebody else's experiences. And it really is our experiences that drives real change. And so that's my goal in working with Ron is creating a broader awareness where people can drive uh, additional impact. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Uh, awareness is, is such a key factor. Uh, you know, just, just over the last couple of weeks, I've had conversations and, uh, and when the Q&A comes in, people, people are asking uh, more well thought out, thought out questions and, and things that they want to answer. And it's a lot of it has to do with access and awareness and how should I be engaging and interacting with people uh, who have disabilities, right? What is polite? How far should I go in asking um, if I can help them? When should I, uh, when should I give them space and step back? And I think uh, I have not heard much of that until relatively recently. So I, I find that as a very encouraging sign. So I know, Ron, this all kind of what Trina just said feeds right into your positioning of why not you? And that feeds Trina's positioning of every, every person a change leader. And so it sounds to me like you've come together very serendipitously to strengthen both messages and you're gonna take this out into the world, I understand, through a webinar, a series of webinars. Tell me what you have envisioned for that. Trina, go ahead. So my goal there is, again, is just expanding. The more that we use our voices, the more people we get on board. And the, the webinar series is sharing some of those same questions that Ron was mentioning as far as a lot of, a lot of times we have fear uh, that's stopping us from making progress here. And so it's stepping through that fear and becoming more understanding and being open to, I may not always get it right. I may say something that is, isn't correct and that's okay. And creating an environment where instead of holding back in fear, we're stepping forward in faith that we're going to become better people because of what we're learning and what we're attempting to do. And so through a series of webinars and being able to share you know, our experiences, what we've learned, how you can affect change, we're hoping that we can get people being uncomfortable being uncomfortable. And, and stepping through that change and really getting on board in their own awareness as they move forward. Ron, did you yeah, want to add I, I see the why not you as, as being closely tied with the whole idea about getting a, a wider, wider breadth of uh, voices heard. Because if, if why not you means each of us in our own way within ourselves can make a difference and that we shouldn't think that we can't do it. And if it's a call for, call to action for each and every one of us, we have to give people the capability uh, and the power to have their voice heard. And, and that's why it's so important uh, to raise awareness and appreciate uh, what each person brings to the conversation. So Ron, you come from a, a very, a, a unique perspective of having been able-bodied, now being disabled in your body, 
but also having a really powerful and like Trina, a very big corporate background. Are you guys thinking of focusing in the corporate realm or are you actually looking to expand this into the broader communities? From my perspective, this is a great question, by the way, because you know, if you look at the work overall within diversity, equity, and inclusion, it typically is happening at the corporate level. That's not to say there aren't community um, amazing community programs out there, but where we found that there's most opportunity is within the workplace to create more inclusive environments that then expand out into the communities. So my perspective has been primarily corporate driven programs, but there's a lot of opportunities for engagement in volunteer programs, community programs, others that can also take these types of ideas and create, you know, further awareness as well. Ron, yeah, I agree. I, there, there's no reason to segment it into any uh, or pigeonhole it into one certain area. Uh, I think um, the message is universal. Yeah. So what do you see as the fastest way to actually get the corporations moving? I know it's based in education and corporate education takes time, but in the, you know, in the effort to really push this along, Trina, you already have expanded the terminology. Can you, can you share a little bit of that? Because I think in the world of awareness, it's yeah. really helpful for people to understand the DEI, the way we've been using it, really, um, while it's helpful to remember diversity, ethnicity, and inclusion, um, that's really just the starting point. It is. I, I think that I was sharing earlier uh, as, as we were talking, the biggest thing that uh, people ask when they first get in connection with me is, can you explain the acronyms? <laughs> so the acronyms are there intentionally and you know, there's been a lot of them, DEI, D and I, DEIB, I've seen JEDI, right? Like there's, there's a lot of acronyms and really the, the reason for that and the intention behind it is because there is a lot to this work and you can't group it all together. You really need to give each its own focus. So as I've been working with organizations and putting this together, I've come up with a, a model I call the be ready. Let's be ready. And that really focuses on that B part is belonging. How can we really create an environment where everybody feels like they belong? They can share their voice without feeling like I need to restrict or put a filter on to meet whatever culture is there. Like we should be able to bring our whole selves forward every single day. And so that's really the goal you're trying to get to. And the ready model is spelled R-E-A-D-I for race and ethnicity, definitely needs its own space and time and effort to be able to understand the challenges and issues that are arising within our work environments and our social environments in our communities, in our schools and colleges, like everywhere it's pervasive and really understanding how we can adjust our own biases for race and ethnicity and what might be impacting us. And then the equity in pay, equity in promotion, that E part really has its own set of work that allows us to understand the injustices that are happening from an equity standpoint. Then you have accessibility, which is where I love working with Ron and, and understanding the needs for those that may not be part of the conversation today or may not understand how they cannot even get in. You know, Ron was mentioning, how do I even get into the building? Can I work somewhere? And how do I, can I do that on a daily basis? What are the extra burdens that I have and how do we alleviate those so that we can provide more access? And then I separate, separate out a separate diversity aspect for all forms of diversity. So gender, LGBTQ, we have veterans, we have other, other areas of diversity that we really can focus on. And then the I, the I is inclusive, that we're making sure that when we're having meetings, when we're talking, when we're pulling people in, we're pulling everybody to the table. And so that be ready model is one where it's really helped in explaining the breadth of scope of work and 
the areas you can focus on and it can get very overwhelming, right? And, and really, as you're talking through and trying to figure out what can I do? And if we're really saying we all have an opportunity to change on a daily basis, just looking at, am I being inclusive? I'm looking around to see who, who is in my network? Is my network diverse? That's an easy place to start. And so I think all, just understanding the scope of what's there and then making little deliberate choices uh, every day that helps drive change. Thank you. And Ron, what if someone is listening to this and wants to take action, really wants to answer that question, why not you, and says, yes, me, I can do X, where would you recommend they start? Well, that's pretty open-ended. In, in terms of access, uh, I would say it, you have to listen. You have to listen and, and see what people want and you have to be courteous. And, it, and it's great when somebody comes over to me and they see that maybe I'm struggling with something or I'm, I'm taking my wheelchair out of the car, maybe they can help me. And I appreciate that, but they also have to listen. Maybe, maybe I've gotten it, you know, I've got it. I've got a system, I've done it before, I can do it again. But in other cases, I know I can use their help. And, and it's gonna be different for each person. Um, you know, I, I think back, it was maybe three, four years ago, I went to uh, a networking event with, uh, with a group of attorneys and the event was upstairs in the restaurant and there was no elevator. And, and these were trust and estates and elder care attorneys and I'm like, how can they possibly do that? But in, in, instead of coming off as an angry um, person, I just, you know, I didn't really have to say much because they were humiliated on their own. And I didn't really have to say much. And I know it struck a chord. And me being that angry disabled guy uh, is, not, is generally not the way to go and it's not the way to further the conversation. Well, and wheelchairs are not the only challenge in, in this respect, right? It, at every age, we could have differently abled people. And sometimes it's, it's a cane, it's a walker. It, it may just be a limp. It may be something that, um, that is not visible to us that makes someone differently abled. But your point about asking and being willing to listen and opening these conversations with people you wouldn't normally think you should have them with. And I, I love the point of just being courteous. Don't, don't come in as the angry, resentful person because you're going to lose the hearing immediately. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think for all of us, we would love to be a part of a better world for everyone so whatever we can do to move that forward, I really hope people will take your advice and all of your, both of your ideas forward. So thank you so much for coming back and being with us today. Trina Limpert, Rise Next, and Ron Gold, Lean On We, and rongold.live. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you again. Great, thank you so much. And we'll be right back.